Ah, oh, audio chip amplifiers. What are my favorites and why? I've built a few audio amplifiers over the years from discrete tube amps and a whole bunch of chip amps. I really like the chip amps because you can put them in a small itty bitty case like this. But to me they all sound great. The only thing I really haven't built completely was a tube amp. You know, I've alligator clipped one together. If you look in one of my earlier videos, I'm kind of clipped one together and used a breadboard. Problem with those things are ex the expense. The uh, high quality transformers you need just get expensive. But anyway, I really like the chip amps. They're easy. Especially if you want to build a nice amplifier. They sound great. You know, the good chips sound fantastic. And you can roll a nice amplifier with that. So now I'm going to take a look at my favorite chip amps and the reason why I like them. The first chip is the TDA 7267. There's also a larger version. This is an 8-pin dual inline package. And there's a larger version that, I think it's a 14 or 16 DIP. And uh, exactly same die inside, it's just the other one can dissipate heat better. So it can, uh, can go a little bit higher power. Snickers here is swishing his tail. <laughs> but anyway, I like this chip. It's great for low power amplifiers. You can get a couple watts of clean power, 12 volt 8 ohms. You can also use it at 9 volts and get um, about a watt at 8 ohms and uh, about a watt and a half at 4 ohms. The power supply voltage dictates how much power you're going to get from any amplifier. And the design of this allowed maximum output swing without using bootstrap capacitors or you know ex a lot of external components it doesn't need a lot of external components it's really a five pin type amplifier in design because one side is all ground for heat sinking and the other four pins is a power output and uh, the mute pin, which is really a supply voltage rejection capacitor, and of course the input. Unfortunately, these are discontinued, but they're available in large quantities as new old stock. Very good IC. I'm extremely happy with the sound. Great for uh, small battery power type amplifiers. The next chip is the TDA2003. Pretty interesting story about this IC. It first started out in the mid 70s as the TDA2002. It was made by SGS at the time. They are now called ST Microelectronics. But back in the day they had a um, chip designer named, uh, I believe it's pronounced Bruno Marari. Just a whiz at designing uh, linear IC circuits. Well, this chip was designed for the uh, car stereo industry, so they made it for um, you know, the output stages for car stereos. And um, a cup, another company called uh, National Semiconductors came along and uh, Snickers, and they copied the chip. They made the LM383. And the designers had a lot of respect for Bruno. And matter of fact, the guy who designed the LM383, he has a web page where he talks about the design of the chip and everything. And if you Google the LM383 story, it should be one of the first links. It's a pretty technical argue, uh, article where they discuss how they, uh, all the problems they had to do to design a 5-pin audio power amplifier. It's very interesting for you technical guys and uh, has a lot of neat information 
and uh, how they said you know they up they said up front pretty much that it was a you know a copy of the TDA 2002 but anyhow SGS they didn't want to be outdone so they came up with the TDA 2003 the difference you know it's not much it just has higher performance for a given supply voltage it can put out a little bit more power. So the uh, TDA2002 was discontinued and this chip replaced it many many years ago and is in fact still in production. So uh, I like it. You can make a nice amplifier. You can handle really low impedance loads. You can bridge it um, single ended with four ohm load, you, you can probably get about five clean watts. Of course, you, you can probably get up to uh, eight or so with uh, lower impedance loads. I made a uh, amplifier years ago using this, or using the TDA two zero zero three. I made this probably. I think I made it when I lived in my first apartment and that would have been from 91 to 94 so I had this thing for about 20 years it works just fine okay move on the next group of amplifiers are these stereo bridge amplifiers that were designed for car stereos one issue with a chip like the TDA 2003 you know just a single chip not unbridged you don't get a lot of power well if you want a simple supply say like a portable 12 volt battery something you can carry around you want a little bit more power you want a very easy to build amplifier you can look to these stereotype bridge amplifiers so it's a complete bridge there's two channels all in one package uh, this one is a TDA 1558Q however there's a whole bunch of different types you can make this one work with only three film capacitors connected to it of course there will be some jumpers and things but you can make a complete stereo amplifier you'll get you know, up to 15 clean watts per channel into 4 ohm loads. They advertise these things at being like 20 or 22 watts, but that's at a ridiculous 10% distortion. I measure, you know, around 14, 15 clean watts per channel from these chips. And with efficient speakers, that, that can get pretty loud. And um, distortion performance is... Yeah, it's not too bad with these. Some of them are uh, worse than others. These aren't too bad. Like I said, not a lot of parts. So these are great. Look for these things. And just make sure you put a decent size heat sink on it because remember, you, you really got four amplifiers inside this thing and it's going to dissipate a lot of heat. Next up is these five pin so called hi fi chips. There's a bunch of different types. There's the LM1875. There's the TDA2030, 2030A, 2040, and 2050. And there's even some older types as well, but I won't get into those. My favorite is the TDA2050. It's one of the latest that came out. It has, I should say, at a given supply voltage, it has the highest output swing, the largest output swing, meaning most power into a load. And it's not by much. It it could do a couple more watts than the uh, TDA 2040, and a, about a watt and a half more than the LM1875. And it has a peak output current of. 5 amps versus 4 amps for the other ones meaning the uh, 2040 and 1875 sounds fantastic 
and I built a whole bunch of amplifiers. I've built um, this little mono block in the Lucite cube here. And a bunch of stereo, well, a couple stereo amplifiers with it. Here's my computer speaker amplifier I made with it. It drives these modified realistic satellites and a 15 inch subwoofer. Sounds fantastic. These are very easy to use. Doesn't require a lot of components. Easy to lay out on the circuit board. And I should mention, you really have to be careful when you lay out these chips. You want to use star ground. Um, keep components, your, couple, your decoupling capacitors, like for the power supply, your Zobel network, and all that stuff. You want to keep the components very close to the chip. But when you do it right, you can make a really nice little amplifier. You can get, uh, I'd say, about 25 watts of clean power maximum with these. I don't recommend pushing them any harder. You know, they are in a small, a tiny little package here. They have to dissipate a lot of heat. They have their own, like all these other amplifiers I talked about earlier, they, they all have built-in circuit protections. But still, you know, you don't want to push them beyond what they were made to handle. Next up are the high power audio amplifier chips. Well, if you need more power than the 5 pin hi-fi chips previously mentioned, take a look at these. This here is the LM3886. Excellent sounding. You can get 60 plus clean watts of power. And you know, this is not the only one. There's a whole bunch of different chips on the market now. And I think you can go, you know, around 100 watts or more with the certain models. But this chip here, it's been around for a few years. It's still a newer technology chip, but um, excellent sounding high power amplifier. Just pay attention to your grounding layout and good circuit construction you make a really nice amplifier. Okay, well, I talked about all of these ICs here, which are my favorites. Which one's my very favorite? Well, I think I mentioned it already, but I like the TDA 2050. Like I say, it's super simple to use. I'm a kind of person, I like efficient speakers. So I don't need a lot of power to drive them. Now I used to drive them with a 3 watt amplifier and it sounded good. But you know, some very dynamic music I would get into clipping so moving up to one of these I have more headroom. And like I say they sound great and easy to build. Well I guess that's about all I'm going to say. What I'm going to do I'm going to make some more videos on each of these chips. I may not do this one because the pin layout doesn't allow me to breadboard it easy, but I'm going to breadboard each chip in its own video, show you how easy it is to set them up and make a little amplifier. That's it. Thanks for watching.